In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this formula to find the roots of a complex number. Now, let's start with a complex number called a plus bi, and we can show it on a complex plane like this. It has a real part a and an imaginary part b. This is the magnitude of our complex number, the square root of a squared plus b squared. Here is the angle associated with our complex number and also a magnitude that we show by r in the polar form. In the right triangle you see this is r cosine theta and this is r sine theta. So we can rewrite our complex number in the polar form and as I told you in the previous video we can show it by r times e to the power of i theta. This form of writing a complex number is called the rectangular form and this is the polar form of writing a complex number. In this right triangle, we can write tangent of theta as sine theta over cosine theta, which can also be written as r sine theta over r cosine theta, which is b over a. So we can find theta to be arc tangent of b divided by a. So these are the two relations that connect the rectangular form to the polar form. So let's write this complex number in the polar form. We have 1 minus i as our complex number. So here the real part is 1 and the imaginary part is minus 1. To find r, we can use this relation, the square root of a squared plus b squared. We know that a is 1 and b is minus 1, so r is equal to the square root of 2. And as a is 1 and b is minus 1, we have theta to be equal to arctangent of minus 1. So let's draw a unit circle and also the axis of tangent. So tangent of theta is minus 1. And we have two angles, two thetas associated with it. The first one is theta 1, which is pi over 2 plus pi over 4. And the second one is theta 2, which is 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 4. But which of these angles, which of these thetas, theta 1 or theta 2, are related to our complex number 1 minus i? Based on the real and imaginary parts of our complex number, we can say that our complex number is located in the fourth quadrant. So our choice would be theta 2, which is 7 pi over 4. And we can write our complex number in the polar form like this. We can also use theta to be minus pi divided by 4, which gives us this complex number, which is related to the same point on our unit circle. There are three quadrants here. In the first quadrant, real part of the imaginary number is positive. The imaginary part is also positive. So the tangent would, would be positive. Also in the third quadrant, we have the tangent to be positive because the real part and the imaginary part of the complex number is negative. But in the second quadrant, tangent is negative because the real part is negative and imaginary part is positive. And we have the same situation in the fourth quadrant because here real part is positive but the imaginary part is negative so tangent becomes negative. Suppose that we have this complex number, a plus bi, and we want to take it to the power of n. As you can see, it would be easier to use the polar form and write this complex number like this, which is r to the power of n times e to the power of i n theta. And we can write it as r to the power of n times these parentheses, which involves cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. This formula that you just saw is called the Demoor's formula and we are going to use it to find the roots of a complex number. In this part, I want you to use the Demoor's formula to write 1 minus i to the power of 10 in the complex form like a plus ib. As you can see, it would be really time consuming to multiply 1 minus i 10 times. But if we use the polar form and actually the Demoor's formula, it would be really easier. So we write our complex number 1 minus i in the polar form and then use the Demoor's formula to see how the complex number changes after taking it to the power of 10. Pay attention to the arguments of cosine and sine. We have 10 pi over 4, which is 2 pi plus p over 2. The square root of 2 to the power of 10 is 2 to the power of 5. 
And the trigonometric part can be written as cosine minus p over 2 plus i sine minus p over 2. Because here we have 2 pi plus pi over 2. And we can actually get rid of 2 pi because it's a full circle and gets back to the same point. So we can just write minus p over 2 for these two trigonometric functions. If you visualize the unit circle, you can see the cosine of minus pi over 2 is 0. And the sine of minus pi over 2, or 90 degrees, is minus 1. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. And we can write the trigonometric part as 0 minus i, which becomes uh, minus 32i. And it is a pure imaginary number. Now, let's see how we can find the roots of complex numbers. Suppose that we have a complex number z. And we want to find the nth roots of this complex number. It means that we want to find the solutions to this equation. Now again, take our complex number to be a plus ib. And it can be written in the polar form like this. So we define another complex number w, which can be taken to the power of n like this. To find the nth roots of complex number z, we need to solve this equation. The first thing we notice is that rho to the power of n is r, so rho can be written as the nth root of r. The second thing is that n alpha should be equal to theta plus 2kp. So we can write alpha to be theta over n plus 2kp divided by n, and k can be 0, 1, 2, 2, and minus 1. And as you can see in this part, if k is n, we have 2 pi, and alpha becomes theta over n again, which is uh, equivalent to putting k to zero. So we can write the nth roots of a complex number like this. Now let's see some examples. Find the fourth roots of one. This means that we should actually solve this problem. z to the power of four is equal to one, and we should have four answers, four complex numbers, that when we take them to the power of 4, they equal to 1. We write z to the power of 4 using the De Moore's formula and write this equation. We know that 1 is equal to 1 times cosine of 0 plus i sine 0. The first thing that we notice is that r to the power of 4 is 1, so r should be 1. And also 4 times alpha is equal to 0 plus 2kp, and we can find alpha to be kp over 2, and this is the fourth root, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the fourth roots that we are looking for. We can write the first root by putting k to 0, and writing r, and actually using the polar form, which is 1. The second root, z1, is i. The third root, z2, is minus 1, and the fourth and the last one is minus i. The magnitude of these complex numbers are all 1, and we can actually show them on a unit circle. This is the first root, which is 1. The next one is i, z1. The next one is minus 1, and the last one is minus i. These are the fourth roots of 1. Now, let's find the fourth roots of this number. It means that we should solve this equation. The first step is to find this complex number, minus 8 plus 8 times uh, the square root of 3i in polar form. So we write this complex number as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Finding r is really easy. What we need to do is to take the square root of a squared plus b squared. a squared is 64 and b squared is 3 times 64. So we have 4 times 64 which is 2 times 8 and it is 16. So r is 16. So let's put r here. What we should do next is to find theta. Theta is the arctangent of 8 times the square root of 3 divided by minus 8, which is the real part. And we have tangent minus 1 or arctangent of minus square root of 3. So let's first see where it is located. It's located in the second quadrant because the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive. So it is in the second quadrant. If you put arctangent of minus the square root of 3 in a calculator, it gives you minus 60 degrees. But we know that our 
Number is located in the second quadrant and it is 120 degrees. So theta is 2 pi over 3, which is 120 degrees. Now that we have theta, we can write the parentheses as cosine 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. Now the second step, we need to find the solutions for rho and alpha for this equation. Pay attention that this is 4 alpha and this should be 4 alpha, it's my mistake. So we have rho to the power of 4 equals to 16, so rho is 2. And we have 4 alpha to be 2 pi over 3 plus 2 kp, so alpha is pi over 6 plus kp over 2. So we can write the first root using k0, and we have the square root of 3 plus i. Now let's show it on a circle. So this is z0. Take a look at this triangle. This side is 1 and this side is the square root of 3. If you look at the argument here, if we put k to be 1, we should actually rotate the first number by 90 degrees and the second point should be here. Now look at this triangle. Can you guess what z1 is? Let's calculate it and see. So if we put the numbers, we can see that it is minus 1 plus the square root of 3i as you can see in the picture. Now let's get to the third root. If you pay attention to this triangle, you can see that both imaginary and real parts are negative. So can you guess what actually the third root is? So as you can see in the triangle, we can say that z2 is minus the square root of 3 minus i. And it applies for the last and the fourth root. And we can see, say that actually z3 is 1 minus the square root of 3i. If we have a complex number z and we want to find the nth roots of this complex number, we can write them as some complex number for which the magnitude changes to the nth root of r for all the roots and also an expression in which the argument is theta over n plus 2kp over n for k from 0 to n minus 1. For example, for the second roots, we have theta over 2 and theta over 2 plus pi. For the third root, these are the arguments we need to put in the expression. For the fourth root, we have some complex number in which their arguments are actually separated from each other by pi over 2, as you can see. So if we connect these points, here we have a line, here we have a triangle, here we have a square, and we can say that for the fifth root, we have a pentagon. So we can say here we are dealing with the vertices of a polygon. So if this is a unit circle, we can say that these points that you can see on the unit circle are the fifth roots of number one. And if we actually connect the nearest vertices to each other, we can have a polygon. So if you want to know how we can calculate the blue area by just having the complex, the five complex numbers you can see in the picture, I suggest you to watch this video.